What's happening YouTube? I am Morfex from the Netherlands um, and today I'll be showing you this. This is my self-proclaimed Super Nintendo. It's a uh, home-built Super Nintendo for emulation purposes, obviously. Um, I think it was 10 years old, I believe it was 1992, when my awesome parents gave me and my brother a Super Nintendo. Um, that's not this one. Um, that would be this little fellow right here. This is the original Super Nintendo me and my brother got when I was 10 years old. It's an awesome thing and before we go into detail about the Super Nintendo, um, let me state the obvious that I didn't want to mess around with this, this fella. Um, this had to remain intact no matter what. So uh, yeah. So yeah, the, the, the Super Nintendo uh, it remains one of my best childhood memories. I can't even imagine how many hours it kept me indoors. Um, I was into gaming before this. We even had a Sinclair ZX Spectrum on which my dad programmed some games. Um, we had an Atari 2600, we had a Philips MSX and some other stuff I believe. And I played a lot of friends that had Commodore 64s, Amigas, NES's, etc. But the uh, SNES really made it a definite thing for me. Um, to this day at age 34 I can say I own several consoles um, and still play games almost every day so it's something I really cannot imagine myself without. Well now, um, back to the Super Nintendo. Um, I've been thinking about building a console, kind of PC, for a couple of years now. Uh, I know there are several people out there that have built a NES PC, and even some, I believe, have built a SNES PC. But a uh, couple of years ago, you were sort of limited to PC hardware. Um, for example, a mini ITX mainboard and all that goes with it, you know, like the CPU, memory, and all that. Um, but to build that, you're also limited to the casing in which it has to be built. I believe some of you out there even managed to squeeze a mini ITX mainboard into its SNES console, but using a NES would seem to be the safer choice. But um, a mini ITX mainboard setup is still quite expensive, and then there are cooling issues and whatnot. Um, the thing is, if, if I was to build a emulation console, it would really have to be like a console when using it. I don't want to be messing around with a keyboard and a mouse, and I don't want to hear cooling fans and hard disks and whatnot. So if I was to build a emulation console, it would really be have to, have to be usable as a console. Um, and today, I feel that's really possible. Um, as you can see, it is, it is possible, of course. Um, but a few years back, if I would have built something, um, I would probably not really enjoy using it. So, um, afterwards, I'm glad I waited. Now, looking at it, um, it would almost seem as a regular SNES. Um, I looked around for a couple of months here in the Netherlands for a second-hand SNES uh, that hasn't turned yellow yet. I believe if, if you take a look at the original one here, I believe it's not really visible in the light of this camera but this one is, is quite yellow compared to the Super Nintendo. I wanted a uh, SNES that had, hadn't turned yellow yet and I found one for a decent price so that's good. Um, so yeah it's, it's pretty well preserved this one. Um, so it would seem like a regular SNES except for the uh, USB ports in the front. Um, there's not that much different, um, which was exactly my purpose. Um, so as I mentioned, two USB ports in the front, uh, that would be enough for me, seeing as I never play games um, that require more than two players simultaneously. So um, Then there's the power, power switch and reset switch that actually work as a power and reset switch. Uh, the thought of having those switches there without functioning would be stupid in my opinion. So they work, but I'll show you later on in this video. Then there's the red LED over there, which indicates if the SNES is turned on. So I made sure that's still the case with this build. Um, the eject button is a different case. I glued it in this position. Uh, normally it stays in this position because of the 
cartridge eject mechanism inside but I removed that um, I'll show you why I had to remove it inside um, so I had to glue this position uh, normally if the mechanism inside is gone this this would drop down so I had to glue this into this position so that it looked natural um, so as you can see there is a cartridge present uh, to, ga to me gaming on a SNES console without a cartridge, cartridge uh, feels weird so I took a cartridge and replaced the label with a custom design label with a Super Nintendo logo as you can see that I designed myself it's not that spectacular but to me um, yeah it's uh, kind of the icing on the cake um, so yeah kind of like to do that now um, taking a look at the back originally there is a back plate with the, the display output port, power input and things like that um, I made a HDMI and a micro USB port there and I made a back plate along with it in the same grayish color as the original one a little bit darker than the rest of the console as you can see here on the original one it, it's almost uh, the same so yeah that's cool um, well, that's, and that's all for aesthetic purposes, of course. Um, through, throughout this whole build, I wanted to make sure it all looks nice and clean and uh, as if it would come out of a factory like this. So, really try my best on that. So, that, that's about the uh, exterior of my Super Nintendo. Uh, give me a minute, I'll open up this bad boy and get back to you to uh, show you what's inside. Okay. Here we are, um, the heart of this Super Nintendo. As the title already mentions, it's all built around the uh, Raspberry Pi 2. I wasn't familiar with Raspberry Pis at all, but a while ago a friend of mine bought the Model 2 and mentioned it has a quad-core CPU and one gigabyte of RAM, and that's the point when I started thinking about a emulation console again. So I started doing some research on emulation possibilities on the uh, ARM platform and here we are about half a year later so placing this uh, Raspberry Pi into the SNES console was somewhat tricky um, you have to think about the other stuff that has to be placed as well and you don't want to stumble upon difficulties later on with placing other components yeah so um, let's look at how the, the Pi gets powered I um, I took a um, let's see I took a micro USB extension cable uh, which would be here this one maybe I should As you can see um, the uh, micro USB extension cable uh, was all the way here. Um, First, uh, I did for two reasons. The first is the obvious. Uh, I had to create a uh, power input port in the back. That would be here. Um, and the second reason is um, I had to create a power interrupt with the uh, with the SNES uh, SNES switch, which would be here. Um, so I connected this this cable of this extension cable. I uh, connected it through my power switch making me able to power on and power off the Raspberry Pi through this switch um, also uh, connected to this um, power switch would be the red LED which goes here goes from the uh, let's see here uh, it goes from the power switch over to there which would be the indicator position of the LED so uh, when it's it's powered on it will put its power through through here through the LED and I had to use a small resistor because it's a uh, 1.8 volts LED so yeah USB is obviously 5 volts so um, yeah then there's the uh, HDMI port which would be here uh, again an extension cable making me able to create the port in the back um, and connect the HDMI to the by wherever it would be in the in the, the console. Moving on, uh, here you see the 
cartridge socket, the original one. Uh, I had to cut away the rest of the main board of the SNES, which would take up almost all the space in the whole console. Um, so I had to keep this, obviously, because I wanted to be able to put in a cartridge, as you saw earlier on. Um, moving up to the front, you have these two USB ports right here. Uh, again, with a couple of extension cables. Um, they're connected to ports 0 and 1 of the Raspberry Pi. I had to make sure it all looks nice and clean. So as you can see here in the ports, I I uh, painted the, the little plate on which they are mounted. I painted it a bit of grayish so it would match the color of the SNES. So yeah, just to make it look nice and clean. Um, that brings us to the final piece of hardware. Um, to use the original reset switch of the SNES, I had to place a switch component on the inside and place it rather precisely uh, in a position where the reset switch would hit it um, because here you can see um, this would be the original uh, reset switch of the SNES and when placed it would have to hit this switch which would be a simple power interrupt that is connected all the way through here to a two pin header on the Raspberry Pi it's the run header which functions as a pretty simple power interrupt yep. just to make sure the recent switch would actually have a functionality so uh, that would wrap up the hardware aspects of uh, the Raspberry Pi and built into the Super Nintendo um, it may seem a little full but that's all because of the uh, the long wires um, these are the shortest extension cables I could find so yeah that's uh, that's that so um, give me a minute I'll put the Super Nintendo back uh, back together and I'll uh, connect it to my TV and show you what it can do So here we are. Um, I've set up my Super Nintendo, which would be nothing more than connecting the power cord and the HDMI cable. And uh, before I uh, I start it, I switch it on. Um, let me explain that I installed RetroPie with Emulation Station. That's a uh, an awesome operation operating system designed for emulation purposes like this. Um, it's near perfect, but you will see in a minute. Um, now, without further ado, let's switch it on and see what happens. There you go. Not sure if you can see on the video, but the red LED is on. Uh, you can see my uh, custom designed splash screen for it, the Super Nintendo emulation system logo and booting up emulation station and here we are of course um, there is quite some configuration to be done before it all functions like this but it's uh, relatively easy if you want to know how to do this yourself I recommend Tech Tips's channel uh, he has helped me and many others greatly with even getting this far I posted a link to his channel in the description below so go check him out if you want to know more about RetroPie and Emulation Station and how to tweak it exactly to your liking. So um, just for the record, I only use this for Nintendo games, um, but there is loads of other emulators built in as well. So don't worry, there's more than meets the eye right here. Um, I also have a couple of USB controllers. Um, this one... Uh, is the Buffalo uh, Classic USB Gamepad. It's by far, in my opinion, the best USB SNES gamepad out there. I also have a uh, Retrolink NES USB controller and a Retrolink N64 controller. Um, they're all usable um, with this uh, RetroPie system. Um, there are drivers for it which function. It takes a bit of customization and tweaking to get those controllers to work really nicely, but it's all possible and 
really makes the emulation experience feel like the real deal. So um, now let me start a game to show you uh, how this works. Um, you can see the, uh, there's a list of games um, which you can choose whatever you want to put on it. Um, it's really easy. Now let's do a familiar one, Super Mario World. see it all works really nicely so yeah uh, you can uh, you can bind some some keys to your controller um, which would be which would make you able to quit games or go back to the emulation station in my case I did it with the select button and start and that would make me go back to the emulation station menu um, yeah. as you can see lots of games here um, the Nintendo 64 would be uh, I guess the, the most you can squeeze out of the Raspberry Pi 2 um, when I overclock it to overclock it to I think it's a thousand megahertz with uh, enough GPU RAM then the games of the Nintendo 64 uh, all run very smoothly um, but you can see it's running to its limitations there so um, if you want to be able to emulate say newer games than the N N64 uh, maybe GameCube games or stuff like that uh, then I suggest you wait to a for a uh, Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 or whatever comes next um, well, back to uh, this operating system, the most important aspect of RetroPie and Emulation Station, in my opinion, is that it is made as a gamepad-controlled graphical user interface, which means after all the customization, configuration and tweaking is done, you only have to use your controllers to do anything with it. Um, that was a prerequisite as far as I'm concerned. Like I said before, um, I don't want to have to use a keyboard and mouse because in my opinion that destroys the feel of playing on a console a console uh, should be entirely controlled uh, with a controller or a gamepad so that's very important um, um, yeah that's that's a very important aspect which is accounted for in RetroPie and Emulation Station it really is amazing so if I were uh, to say um, shut it down I could just easily push start on the main menu you have your settings here quit you choose restart system or shut down system or whatever so yeah it, it all works really really nicely um, so yeah that brings me to the end of this video um, that's there's not much more to be said about this other uh, other than that I'm really happy with this Super Nintendo of course um, I'm sure it will provide me with lots of fun hours retro gaming and long nights so yeah, uh, thanks so much for watching, and I hope this inspires more people out there to build something like this. Um, I had a lot of fun looking at other people's SNES and NES PC build projects, so I hope I did the same for you. It's very fun to build, and now it's even more fun to use afterwards. So thanks again, and bye-bye.